What's going on, U.S. history students? Mr. Tomei, coming at you again with another video. Make sure to watch this video, and also definitely make sure to watch the homework assignment. There's going to be important stuff that we're going to go over, stuff you're only going to find here or in the homework assignment when it comes time for the test. We just finished talking about the lead up into World War II, what sets it off, finishing with Pearl Harbor. We now pick up post Pearl Harbor and how America reacts on the home front in the years of World War II, uh, of the American involvement of World War II. Let's get into it. So post Pearl Harbor, American citizens' attitudes dramatically change. Before, if you remember, Americans really did not want to get involved. Although the government had been kind of quietly low-key preparing for a potentially inevitable conflict, American attitudes and opinions from the average American citizen was mostly anti-war. Pearl Harbor takes place, and overnight, those attitudes shift. We become much more of a pro-war um, uh, pro war thinking country. Um, hundreds of thousands of Americans uh, in the next few days after Pearl Harbor go to enlist. Um, they feel a certain type of unifying pride to protect America and uh, to go off and fight in the war effort. Um, American economics, right? If we're talking about business, industry rapidly converted to war production to now meet the new, you know, our country's needs, right? Um, you got a lot of companies uh, now devoting certain factories, you know, whether they be, you know, car companies like Ford to now building planes, um, technology companies um, building things for uh, the war effort. Um, and many women found uh, work, that should say work, not work, I'll go back and change that, in the industrial uh, sectors, uh, helping support the war effort. So it was really kind of a crazy dramatic shift uh, in the matter of, you know, pre Pearl Harbor to right after in the days after, it was really all hands on deck to uh, defend America and go off and fight and protect America and, and get us ready for a war effort. Uh, that's Rosie the River, by the way, the we can do it. Um, she'll come up, we'll talk about her and the Bay Area connection to that actually in a little bit. That's another image of Rosie the Riveter, right? Um, a riveter is someone that like, what she's doing, the person in this picture is riveting in um, whether it be like little drills, you know, the, the nails, the, I don't know what you'd call them, but um, to kind of put these machines and whatnot together. That's what a riveter does. Uh, this picture is a little grainy, but this just shows you young men that are lining up to enlist and whatnot. Um, the kind of first guy looks like the Captain America dude, huh? Let's keep going. Talking about war towns, um, certain cities across America became economic hotspots for work because of the rapid demand for the war industrialization. So from Mobile, Alabama to Detroit, Michigan, here in the Bay Area and Richmond, um, a lot of these cities, um, their industrial centers became all focused about developing the war effort. And this is where kind of the Rosie the Riveter Bay Area connection comes on. Uh, it is that the Rosie the Riveter, that, that person I just showed you, like that, and that, that whole propaganda, more famously, this propaganda piece, it's kind of based off the women that were actually working in the shipyards in Richmond, a little Bay Area connection for you. As a result, because certain cities um, were really developing, there were a lot of jobs because of the war effort, a lot of people migrated across the country. This, however, is gonna to lead to some problems. That just shows you some pictures, right, of the war efforts in war cities. So migration leads to conflict. Historically, it always does. Uh, the mass migration of million Americans just led to a lot of racial and class tensions. Um, for example, in Detroit in 1943, pretty infamous race riots there between whites and blacks. Um, many uh, thousands to tens of thousands, over hundreds of thousands of blacks came up from the South. Um, to look for work kind of in northern cities, uh, an industrial city like Detroit, which was a pretty thriving city at the time compared to what we know of it is today. Thanks, 
my heart jumped a little bit. And uh, there was a mass riots because there was this fear of this competition of jobs. And on top of that, right, there's just like racist people in the world that don't want black people in their neighborhood. So whites and blacks got into mass conflict over a three day period, resulted in about 34 people dying, hundreds, thousands injured. Um, yeah, crazy stuff. Um, more over here on the West Coast, um, and maybe some of you might know this, uh, if like, I think if you're a Puente student, you might have read these stories or books, but the Zoot Suit riots in LA resulted in violent conflicts between, you know, US servicemen, so soldiers, and the large local Hispanic population, typically more of uh, the younger population, younger men who were dressed in the Zoot Suit. Um, so you had police service people um, and other like white civilians attack just hundreds of Hispanic individuals because they were dressed in Zoot Suits and, you know, again, the, the, the zoot suits were seen at the time as being unpatriotic and not, you know, there's just obviously, again, racial tension and, and, and hatred, right, that exists in people's hearts. Um, and the, uh, the ironic part of this is, you know, when the fighting ended, right, um, it was the police who ended up just arresting overwhelmingly majority the zoot suited victims, right, and not the attackers, right? You're not going to attack a soldier. You're, or you're not going to arrest a soldier. You're not going to arrest the white civilians, right? And this kind of, you know, is our history, our ugly history with racial tension. Whether people want to admit it or not, whether people want to actually sit down in my class and listen and learn this or not. These are things that have happened that have led to certain stereotypes, anger, hatred for each other today. Um, and it's a sad part of our history. But the point is, if we learn it, right? if we understand with it, if we come to grips with it, right? And we have some reconciliation, we can perhaps move forward. Certain people, a lot of people in this country wanna disregard this part of our history and act like we never do anything wrong. That's not true. So we need to have some type of reconciliation. We need to understand it so we don't repeat it. These are some images of the zoot suit riots. So for those who don't know, this is what like a zoot suit would be. It's typically excessive clothing, more baggy material. Um, and then on the right, or on, excuse me, on the left, you see kind of a crowd of people watching over these young men who were stripped naked, right? The zoot suit ripped off them, beat up. Uh, shameful stuff, right? Because of course they didn't get any justice. These are kind of images of the Detroit riots, cars flipped over, people being thrown off of street cars, right? Uh, beaten to death. Again, migration always historically leads to conflict. And you know, it happened even here in the United States not that long ago. It still happens to this day. Let's talk about propaganda. So the purpose ultimately of propaganda is to try and evoke a certain type of emotion, an idea, a theory in a, in a public, an American public, or it's used, propaganda is used around the world. Um, it's typically inaccurate, highly exaggerated, irrational. It's usually also just not chill. It's usually pretty racist or sexist or whatever along those lines. And it's used to this day by people, groups, and governments. You actually see here, um, keep this horror from your home, buy war bonds. You guys remember what war bonds are, uh, are. I'll show you a bunch of different pictures here as well. This one's a little bit more chill, right? Not as like racist or rude, but again, just, you know, saying, hey, you know, nice little family, support the war effort, right? You know, remember what Victory Gardens, remember what we talked about in World War One. Uh, you know, this one, recycling, which we'll talk about, got pretty popular because of World War II. This one, this one's like overtly racist, right? Um, this, if you look at any historical cartoon depiction of someone of Asian descent, um, historically, they're going to have those type of features. Obviously, um, the, 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 um, the things that stick out, right? Uh, the ears being kind of rat shape, the face shape, the eye shape, uh, the glasses, typically oftentimes the top knot with the hairstyle, the teeth, the fangs, the writing itself, right? Is obviously stoked with racial overtones, um, right? This is, this is to say, hey, recycle. But this was uh, the gov our government's way of saying recycle. Yeah, I mean, the picture speaks for itself. Um, this one, back to more chill. Um, come on, gang, we're building arms for victory. 
right? Again, you're also gonna notice it's always a white person, right? Even though like black and brown people, Asian people, everyone, right? Women, right? Um, they, they, they held it down, man. They helped us win the war. This one, right? Don't let that shadow touch them, right? The swastika, right? Just other things. Of course, the woman, right? In the kitchen, right? Um, you know, so on and so forth. You can take more time to look at these in the PowerPoint slides if you want. Even Santa got on in it. Um, but let's talk about rationing now. Rationing was introduced during World War II um, to a really mass extent. Um, and it, it was really used to properly kind of keep the troops supplied, whether it be foods, other goods. And Americans were typically given ration stamps that allocated how much things they could have, whether it be, you know, sugar, milk, gas, et cetera. Um, and people were encouraged and often pressured to consume just less goods. Build a victory garden in your backyard so you don't have to go to the store. Um, learn to become very handy around the house so you don't have to buy things, just fix things, right? That's what the whole rationing mentality was. It also leads into recycling, which we'll talk about. This is the example of a rations book. It would have your name on it, your, your, all your identification stuff. Those would be the ration stamps themselves. You'd sign it, right? You know, if you broke the rationing rules, you'd face a penalty, so on and so forth. Recycling. Before World War II, people didn't really recycle. It wasn't a thing um, on a grand scale. But uh, during World War II, everything was recycled from tin to rubber to newspapers. So it could, you know. I don't know. No one's here. Why are the bells ringing? Anyways, everything was recycled during World War II. Um, and, you know, it was recycled, you know, things like tin, rubber, newspapers. They were just reused. We didn't want to waste anything, right? We had to be maximizing our efficiency of what we had to make sure our soldiers could fight and fight hard. Um, you know, a lot of recycling was actually led by young kids, right? Um, they would just compete with each other. Schools had recycling offs, you know, at the time it was the big thing, like which school in the area, the district could recycle the most, right? Um, you know, so you can see here, right? It's like, it looks like it's on a baseball field, all the stuff they recycled. Again, a bunch of kids. This is what they did for fun before, you know, PlayStation and Xbox, you recycled. That was fun. And the last slide here to finish up, Japanese internment. I'm not gonna go and give you five bunch of slides on this because this is what we're gonna cover in our homework assignment extensively. I'm gonna tell you right now, there's gonna be some questions on the test about Japanese internment. If you don't do the homework assignment, you're gonna be lost. Um, good luck with that. Get your homework assignment done. Pay attention, learn some things, reflect. We'll have a dope discussion, I hope, in the next couple of days about it. All right, team, that's all I got for you guys today. Uh, I will talk to you later.